Good morning. It's Thursday morning, and uh, it's the day before Christmas Eve, which for pastors is Christmas Eve, but we'll let that go. Uh, this morning, rather than continuing in Matthew 24, I thought we would read the birth. You know, we started Matthew back in chapter 5 with the Beatitudes, and we just kept going. So we'll go back and pick up a little bit of chapter 1 and maybe 2. Chapter 1 today. Uh, 18 through 25, I think it is. Yes. The birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. And when you put that together with chapter 2, where the wise men come, and, and Joseph is heavily involved in hiding his family and escaping to Egypt, um, you begin to realize that all of this looks like a midrash on the story of Joseph from the Old Testament. You know, Joseph was one of uh, Jacob's 12 sons, and he's the one who was sold into slavery, and they sold him to the Egyptians, and through various uh, things that happened, he became essentially the prime minister of Egypt, which is pretty good for a slave. Uh, he, um, and, and then he's there when his a brother show up during the famine and he, and he he they're reconciled and he rescues them and the story goes on and so joseph precedes the people to egypt and he's there and he takes care of them and he protects them and he he gives them um what they need when they come asking and we see the same kind of thing happening here joseph protects mary and jesus and takes them to egypt um, matthew will later say that all this was to fulfill a prophecy out of Egypt I have called my son, which of course was um, referred to uh, the Israelites and the, the Hebrews in the Old Testament. And so uh, what we see is, um, is here that this whole story is constructed around these prophecies. And um, we had one there that the virgin would conceive and bear a son. And now we have another one um, about uh, he calls his son out of Egypt, and um, and so Jesus fulfills all these different expectations, and and recapitulates the whole life of the story of of the Hebrew people and, and the Israelites in his life. Um, so all of that is important. Um, Luke's version of the story, which we'll do tomorrow, is the one that we're more familiar with, and the one that we assume is kind of what happened, but. Um, Matthew's version is also interesting. He says, um, he says some interesting things there. You know, Joseph is not willing to put Mary away. Um, legally, he could have pointed at her and said, this woman has betrayed me and, you know, slept with someone else and she should be stoned and they would have killed her. Um, or he could have said, well, you go away and she'd have had to go home Perhaps her father would have taken her back in in shame. Perhaps her father would have said, go away. You know, we don't like your behavior either. And she'd have been homeless and, you know, and very vulnerable. So all these bad things could have happened to Mary and her child. But Joseph decides, because the angel has told him that this is all God's action, to, um, to take her as his wife and, you know, just live with this story that's going to be out there and and um, that uh, all will be well. Joseph 
sort of exits the, the scene pretty quickly. Uh, by the time Jesus is 12 or 13, he seems to have died, um, and, or, or shortly after that. And we don't really know much else about Joseph. Um, we think of him as a carpenter. That's a poor translation of the word technon, which is a word that means something like artisan and refers to building with stones and bricks and mud. And so um, what kind of buildings did they build in ancient Israel? Anyone? Stones and bricks. And so um, he'd have been a builder, probably, not a carpenter. Uh, that would have been a good translation for Luther in Northern Europe, and that's probably where that came from. But at any rate, um, what we see here is Joseph seeking to do God's will, uh, not sure what he should do to be just to Mary, and, and finding out from um, the angel that not to worry, not to be afraid. God is doing things here, and you just get in there and, and cooperate, Joseph, and he does. So for us, what does that mean? Well, it means God is doing things and just get in there and be a part of it. And I'll leave that with you for today. And tomorrow we'll look at Luke's story and see what we can get out of that. And I hope that you have a peaceful day today as we prepare for the Feast of the Incarnation.